Hey, my name is Gavi Lazan, and you're watching what I'm doing right now. This training program that I've been following is by a guy named Hal Higdon, who's like 80 years old and has run a bazillion marathons in his life. But when he turned 60, he ran like six marathons in six months. Look at how many things were in there. Those are all of the uh, Tupperware containers from taking food to the office and leaving them in Caitlin's car. Okay. Apparently the uh, the federal judge who Donald Trump once disparaged as Mexican uh, is the judge set to preside over the U.S.-Mexico border wall case. So that's fun. <laughs> My poor lonely Mustang, sitting back here in the snow, waiting for spring. Someone parked their tractor back here. Why do you think there's a little circle right there? Like some underground gerbil it has a nest under there and their hot breath is coming up and melting the snow, that's weird. Yes, I want it, and then they say, no, I don't want it. Oh, tricked at The Apple HomePod comes out this week. I have one that's supposed to arrive on Friday. We can uh, film it on the Cut to the Tech set, do a review. This review starts out, I don't think I've ever described a tech product as lonely before, but it's the word I thought about most as I was reviewing Apple's new HomePod. What a hook. <laughs> so, you know how I've been playing Subnautica recently, and I have called the streams on Twitch Subnautica Eat Fresh. I saw someone on the Subnautica subreddit yesterday who posted a picture that was called Subnautica Eat Fish, and I was like, why didn't I think of that? Ugh. They one up the pun. Maybe they saw yours and they thought, oh, I have a better one. Uh huh. Todd, I'd like to present you a thank you gift as a parting gift. It's, it's makeshift gift wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for hosting me over the past month, Gavi. Ha <laughs> ha! Great, thanks man. It says Echo Todd. Echo Todd! Ah. <laughs> Get it? It's my name spelled backwards. Ish. Hey, damn. You got yourself is that a your Todd first, five. Uh, top 5. It is not. I got one at VidCon. Give me a hug, uh, buddy. You should do a dot 5. Oh, what? Oh. Is it, that, that's this. It's this. this. <laughs> that last shot was just the beginning of this shot, zoomed in over there, and colored orange behind the scenes. So, sometime in November, I flew somewhere to work with a company who shall remain nameless, and during that process, I shot some behind the scenes footage, uh, some of which included a shot of a big thing that they have on set saying, no videography or photography allowed. 
and I included that in the original video. But when I sent the video to said company to uh, review, that was the one shot that they said, you can't put that in there. I, I will go to my grave, never divulging who it was that made me take that out. Michael Morgan started up a new business that um, sells stuff on Amazon. And so he's been working with these suppliers overseas. He's basically having them send their samples here so that we can test them out and be like, yes, this is a good product for you to carry or this is not a good product for you to carry. Um, so this is a blanket that he was interested in selling on his Amazon store. It's weird because when you have a blanket and you're sleeping, it's the weight that makes you comfortable. Um, I guess so. This one is way heavier. Like that's... Oh, jeez. <laughs> if you want to feel some pressure. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> if someone small was underneath this, they would like suffocate them. Okay, um. man. <laughs> I think uh, Can you come here for a second? people with autism generally find it nice to be under a weighted blanket like that. Well, here, here's a small person. Here, Abby. Uh, turn second. Oh, no. I can just... Oh, wow. That is something. Here. This blanket. Oh, <laughs> this actually hurt my back when, when Abby handed it to me. Oh, no. You know, it's... Uh, it's not all that heavy when it's on top of you like this. So, you know what? I don't think it's weighted enough. Let me, <laughs> let me lay that on you. This is how we get work done at the office. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that is cozy. <laughs> oh, I love this. I want one. It's not good for me, but I usually have one of these a day. But for Lent, my plan this year is to try to give up carbonated beverages for the whole 40 days. And that's coming up kind of soon. So we'll see. Thanks for coming on over. Yes, sir. How'd that uh, press work out for you guys? Got pretty good. Pretty good press. Yeah. How's the fun meter today? The fun meter's up, and now every time you mention it, it goes <laughs> up a little bit more. Yeah. That's how fun meters work. Yeah. See? So I'm going to be joining Michael on his. It's not caffeine free. No. Okay. I don't ingest caffeine any other way, though. So for for me, it is okay. also going to end up being a caffeine free adventure. Oh boy. The first week's gonna be not not so fun. I'm gonna have a headache that first day. Yeah. We are on our way to film an intro video for a project that we're working on this year called Elevated Destinations, starring our friend Jake here. Today we're doing an interview with Jake talking about why we're making this project in the first place and hopefully using that as a video uh, showcase to put on Patreon to help people get excited about the project and throw money at it. Do you want to take this whole thing or just want to take the camera and I can carry the lens? Uh, you can carry this and I'll take that. First one to slip wins a prize. See what I'm saying? Down under and like down flat. Spot. Sure. Try it. I wonder how long this took to put together. Uh, it's in right now. Uh, Slate it. Can you describe how you feel marijuana can help solve the opioid crisis? The thing about marijuana is there's no addictive nature to it. It doesn't raise dopamine levels in the brain. 
and it's then easier for people to come off of if they choose to do that. How does using marijuana help alleviate the symptoms that you experience? It does it in a variety of ways. I think generally smoking it directs my focus, so it's more kind of a mental thing. So instead of thinking about the pain, it's more of a, I'm focused on one thing and I can kind of complete that task and sort of push that pain out of my mind. What do you think that people who aren't interested in consuming marijuana in any way can get out of this show? I think there's a lot of misinformation flying around out there right now, and what better way to correct that than physically watch people smoke cannabis and see the results yourself. Being able to be yourself and do the things that you want to do based on the laws governed or selected by the group of people that you are in a nation, you know, or a, um, a group with, it does at least always give us a chance to have a voice to be heard and to try to build towards something. Marijuana is one of the things that really made me think about how other people are feeling and sort of move outside my own selfishness. Um, I don't know that it would do that for everyone, but it did that for me. Oh, man. <laughs> well, oh, I don't like that. La, la, la. I don't like that. La, 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 la. The good thing is that uh, SD cards are not affected by water. But the zoom is replaceable. You can't recapture a moment. To celebrate Gavi's last day, last full day in the United States, here in Missoula, Montana, helping us out for the last month, we've brought him to the hub. Go-karts, arcade, Isn't that my job? bag, and food. <laughs> Give up vlogging. I can't give up vlogging. It's who I am. They have to uh, have us put these hair nets on before we put our go kart helmets on so we don't get our lice on other people's heads. What up, Abby? It's a nice hat you got there. Thank you. I got one. I got one. That's mine. Abby, are you Sass Master Jam? Sass Master Jam. Huh. Oh, so, Kelsey, Gavi, and I made it onto the best of the week scoreboard. What's yeah. Up? How did you feel about that go-kart adventure? I wanted it to be longer. Yeah? If it was twice as long, that would have been okay. We just did laser tag. Everybody's real sweaty. Look at that. That's Dang. Nice. Dang. Oh. I win the sweat. You're the <laughs> all bow to the winner. Sweat king. How was that? You used all this army training. Uh. <laughs> Can you explain the rules of what are the odds? So what are the odds is a game where you ask someone, what are the odds that you'll do a thing? The person will respond with one in a number, which is how the odds that they'll do it. One person will then count down three, two, one, and you both will say a number between one and the number that person just said. If you say the same number, the person who was what are the odds has to do the thing. The other part of this is that if the person being asked says one and two, if you say the same number, the person being asked has to do the thing, but if you say a different number, the asker has to do the thing. So Abby just asked you, what are the odds that you'll lay down in that snow? Yeah. yeah. You said one and two. <laughs> one and two. So now if you say the same number, you have to do it. If it's different numbers, then you have to do it. You stepped in it, Abby. Ah! You stepped in it. <laughs> All right. All right, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so that means you have you to have do it? To. No, 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 so at the gym, they're doing like a giveaway, and if you come eight times before Valentine's Day, you get put into a drawing, and you take little hearts every time you come to the gym, and you put it on your heart. So there's mine. That one's Michael's. He doesn't have as many hearts. No, it's because I'm more loving. Are you going to put your heart on? I'm going to put my heart on. So this is going to be an interesting experiment because I've never tried to run with the lav on for a long period of time. So this will be an interesting experiment for seeing if this is even a possibility for the uh, half marathon. This is a very loud treadmill. I don't like it. I started running on that one 
and it uh, stopped in the middle of it, said unable to attain target speed. So I'm moving over to this one. So Gavi, how do you feel about how this day went as far as filming a what I'm doing right now video? Definitely very interesting, trying to strike a balance between the what I'm doing right now brand and my own style. If uh, you could start the day over and do it again, what, if anything, would you do differently? Maybe had a chance to think <laughs> ahead about what I would have done. We did spring this on you pretty last minute. If this is a thing that we do again with future guest directors, do you have any uh, words of advice for anyone who might try to do this in the future? Maybe try to stick with either all yours or fully what I'm doing right now. <laughs> do you feel like uh, trying to meld different styles uh, tripped you up a bit? Uh, I feel mostly that the issues were the issues I experience when I am running and gunning without any prior uh, planning. Do you, do you doesn't mean it's not bad. like running and gunning uh, on I, the fly in general? I like it. Because that's my favorite way to shoot stuff. Just like tag along, pretend like I'm not there, I just shoot stuff as it happens and figure out the story later. I like doing that, I just find that a large enough percentage of the time it doesn't come out as nice as I would hope. I have a question for you completely unrelated to what we were just talking about. Yeah. When you're in Israel, uh -huh. how often do you speak English? Like practice your English? Hourly? Daily? Like I speak English with my parents, with Ariella, with my siblings, with the vast majority of my close friends. So if I'm not speaking, I'm at least typing in English. Uh, at work, the corporate language is English, so all emails are sent out in English. Do you feel, between your English uh, and your Hebrew, that one is more fluent than the other? I would say that my Hebrew is more fluent when it comes to ad-lib speaking, while my English is more fluent when it comes to reading and writing their body. Your English is just so 0% foreign sounding. Like, there is no generic. way that anyone hearing you speak would ever have the thought, oh, I bet he doesn't live here. I've had someone tell me in English... They're wrong. ...that, that my English <laughs> sounds different. Not that I sound foreign. You're just... You're so fluent that I'm... I thought you must speak English a lot... I do. ...back home. I moved to Israel after I already learned to read and write. The vast majority of my friends are Anglo, whether American, Canadian, British, South African. So, I live in a little uh, American or Anglo ghetto, or grew up in an Anglo ghetto. Well, uh, I guess this is your last full day in the U.S. It's a good one. So, we'll say goodbye tomorrow, but uh, just so that we can say it twice. Thanks for coming. Thanks, thanks for, for helping. Me. Thanks for uh, enlightening us with your knowledge of Israeli things. Thank you for hosting me. Well, Todd. Thank Todd. Thank you too. Thank Todd. Thank Todd bless. God. God bless. Todd bless America. Well, today was certainly an interesting day. I'd like to brainstorm and expand on ways that we can improve this experience of having guests direct episodes of what I'm doing right now, now and again. I'm uh, pretty tired, so I'm probably just gonna call it a day, go to sleep, watching some forensic files. See you guys tomorrow.